So how do you control first reflections and decay time? Well, uh, there's, there's two ways. I, I really like the analogy with water because uh, it's something we can, we can see a lot easier than in sound. And it works exactly the same way. So how does a reflection happen for a start? Well, think of, think of water, waves coming, and the, the, the height of the wave is the pressure. But you can also, when you're swimming in water, you can also feel you going back and forth. And that's normal because between low pressure and high pressure, there's a movement, like wind. Yeah. So imagine this wave that kind of hits a wall. Um, so the, you have this big mass of water that comes. So the wall is rigid. It's not moving. So by definition, there's no velocity. There's only pressure. So pressure and velocity are out of phase, just thus energy con conservation. So when it hits a wall, any velocity that's there has to turn into pressure. And in a wave, you can see it's happening quite easily because it crashes uh, up against the wall and it comes and that's what creates the echo that comes back so that really is the me mechanism of a reflection so how can you control it well first of all you can change the, the the inclination of the warm or you can have the send half of the wave one side and half the other so that's what we call diffusion now you can also imagine that with a big wave you need quite a big diffuser you can't if you've got a 10 meter wave you can't with a with a few centimeters diffuse it but that's the first thing and you're not removing any energy you're not absorbing it, you're just diffusing Setting it elsewhere. Setting it. Yeah. The Spreading it out. Yeah. The second thing you can do is you can, because the problem is not the pressure, the problem is this big movement of water that's going to hit the wall and build up. So if you can slow down this water, you can put, imagine trees or spikes here, that will slow down the water so that there's no more velocity when it's hit here. You're kind of absorbing all of this pressure through here. And this is exactly what porous absorption does. It slows down the speed, the velocity in, this, in the acoustics, so that there's no more, no more velocity uh, when it hits the wall. That's one thing you can do. Again, if you've got waves this long, you need a, typically about a quarter of the wavelength. You need a, a big amount of porous absorber. You can't, with a few centimeters, absorb a long wavelength. The third thing you can do is move back and forth the wall, which is difficult to do with a wall. But you can move a portion of the wall back and forth, and that's what we call a, a resonator or a membrane absorber that can be passive uh, or it could be active. So a passive membrane will move back and forth on its resonance frequency, and you have to tune it to the frequency you want to absorb. It will move back and forth. And an active absorber is the same thing. It's an active membrane which has, first of all, the advantage of you can move on any frequency, so it's broadband. And secondly, you can move it further, so you can be pulling pressure from further away. So you can have a very big equivalent absorption area. 